Good morning everybody. This morning I'm in Hove revisiting a location that I shot about 10 years ago. There's this fishing groin, I think it's a fishing groin, that just projects out into the sea. The spawning is particularly rough, so this might be challenging. But the purpose of today's video is to find out if there's any point to reverse ND grad filters. So I've got my hands on one of these reverse ND filters. I've never used it before, so this is kind of an experiment to myself. But before the sun comes up, let me show you why you might use a reverse ND. Now, turning back to our scene, I've underexposed the shot so that you can see what's going on here. But hopefully it's obvious that the scene is brighter on the horizon than it is at the top of the image. So a traditional ND would be darker at the top and then gradually fade down, which is actually the opposite of what you need. So the theory of a reverse ND grad filter makes perfect sense. By the time this video comes out, talking about Storm Eunice is not going to be news anymore. But whenever I used to come here and photograph this, there was a metal post at the end of the groin. It had a, a red cone type beacon thing on the top of it. That appears to be no longer. It's now sideways in the sea. So unfortunately, we've kind of lost our focal point with this image. That's annoying. I thought that was going to be here when I, I come back to photograph it. But hey, things evolve. This is moving on. Still a very nice scene to photograph. So that's interesting. I'm using the H and Y magnetic filter system, and they're both um, a two-stop grad filter. So they are they are comparable. This is a fair test. And it seems like the regular hard edge grad, not the reverse, is doing a better job at cutting the light down on the horizon. Perhaps shooting into the sun wasn't a fair test. So what I've done is I've recomposed and I'm shooting the original scene, which is at 90 degrees to the sun. I can see that there is a, let's call it a minor benefit. I'll show you the images here, but essentially if you use a traditional grad filter, you get a very lovely soft gradient from top to bottom. If you use a reverse grad, you essentially just lose the tiny slither along the horizon. It, it might be, say, 10% of your image. That's slightly brighter. That's it. So whether or not that looks unnatural because we're all used to it, I don't know. Since the differences are so minor, let's have a closer look. The traditional grad filter is on the left and the reverse filter is on the right. At first glance, you might not see any difference at all. But if you look closely where the two images meet, where the arrows are, you will see that the reverse filter has a slightly reduced exposure. But that's it. You have to pixel peep to really appreciate the difference. I went on to use a reverse filter. Here are my favourites from that morning. completely new to using grad filters then you're going to get hit with a lot of uh, numbers and things that you just don't make sense. First of all you've got the option of a soft grad filter or a hard edge grad filter. Difference between a hard edge you can see here on this one very very quick graduation between dark and light. So you might use this for landscapes where there's not actually much projecting above your horizon that's what I would use, that's what I did use today. And then if you are photographing a scene such as Brighton Pier, where there's something poking up above your horizon, you're much better off using a soft edge grad because the pier can end up in this transition zone and it's not so harsh. Because the danger is, if you were to use this on the pier, the top part of the pier would be darker than the bottom part of the pier, and then that's not great. It's the same for if you're shooting buildings, architecture, I don't often use these for shooting architecture for that reason because you don't want the top half of your building being darker than the bottom half. It doesn't look right, I wouldn't recommend it. So hard edge grad, soft edge grad. The next complication that you might be confronted with is they'll refer to them as 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9 and I don't know why. 0 0.3 means one stop, 0.6 is two stop, 0.9 is three stop. I would recommend buying two stops. These are both two stops, and that is just the amount of light that it will cut down from the sky. I've got a three stop as well, and you can combine them, 
but typically if the sky is more than two or three stops brighter than the foreground, you're not taking photographs at the right time of day. Right, now let me show you the difference between a reverse grad and a regular grad. Now this is what this whole video is about, okay? So you can see here, this is good for landscapes, a scene like this, it will darken down the sky and a very hard transition on the horizon, absolutely fine. And this is a reverse ND. It's got a hard transition in the middle again, and then it gradually gets lighter. So when the sun was coming up and it was brightest on the horizon, then you can see how a filter like this might make perfect sense. Okay, well, that was a very fresh and entertaining morning. I think I've got some good shots there. It's kind of upsetting that the main focal point of this composition is no longer here. As you saw from the images, I was taking some long exposures. So I was combining the grad filters with a 10 stop filter. So I was getting 30 second exposure and then there was just, it just softens the water coming in, softens the whole image. Now there's probably a reason why I've held off for so long investigating a reverse grad because it's one of those things you think, oh, that sounds like a really good idea. Um, but there's maybe a reason why very few people actually use them. I'm a massive fan of using filters. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against using filters. I actually don't like bracketing and doing HDR images. It just creates a load more editing. Yeah, I, I get the fact that if you don't use filters, then you've got no optical issues, such as it increases the amount of um, flare that you might get from the side when the sun's coming in. Also, if you get dirt on your filters or if they're scratched at all. I get, I get both sides of the argument. Some people say, no, not really interested in using filters because they cost money. You have to faff around with them. But when you're on location and you take multiple shots, if you bracket your images, you don't really know what the image is going to look like until you get home. And I kind of like the excitement of seeing the image on the back of the camera thinking, I know I've got a good shot. So that's the reason why I, I do prefer to get it right in camera. And I think in order to keep up energy levels, especially at a location and conditions like this morning where my feet are freezing cold because the tide came in quicker than I was expecting. And then my fingers are freezing because I've got to play about with all of these cameras and filters and everything. So in order to keep up the energy levels, I think I prefer to get it right in camera. Because I can leave here now in the knowledge they've got some great images. Let's wrap up this video. So would I recommend you getting a reverse grad filter? Well, I think there's such a small benefit in it. I think you should save you money on this occasion. If you don't have any filters, I would recommend getting a regular grad filter. If you've already got grad filters and you've heard about this product and you're thinking, oh, should I spend my money here? If you've got loads of money, then yes, you'll probably appreciate that little step up in quality. But it's such a minor difference, I'm not entirely sure anybody will appreciate it and anybody will even notice it in your images. So hopefully now you know a little bit more about grad filters and if you're thinking about getting a reverse grad filter, you're a bit more informed. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.